So in this video, we are going to talk about the inner workings of a site like Etherscan. So Etherscan is basically a website that scans the blockchain, so in this case Ethereum, and gives you some statistics and analysis about it. Um, for example, which transactions have happened, uh, which account has done which transactions, uh, how many holders there are for a certain token and how the money or the tokens are distributed. Of course, we won't be able to create such a complex application in a 10 to 15 minute video, but we will try to run our own node. Uh, we will try to connect to that node and do some transactions and basically uh, just play with it to see what we can research. So basically how this works is by running a client on your PC. So basically you are able to download a client. There are different clients written in different languages, starting from JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, .NET and Java. So what you can do is download a client, run it locally, and then we can connect to that client. There are also other websites that uh, provide basically this functionality for you. So you don't have to download your own client, but we will go um, in this direction because it will um, give you much broader knowledge around it and you will be able to do much cooler stuff with it. So let's continue. There are different node types. Uh, so there are full nodes, there are light nodes, and there are archive nodes. So a full node basically stores your full blockchain data. Um, so you will be able to access every single transaction that has ever happened on the blockchain. Whilst in the light mode, you're actually just storing a header chain and the requests are made um, subsequently uh, calling for that data. And for an archive mode, um, what is interesting about that is basically that all your data gets stored. I think a requirement to run this is around two terabytes. So in our case, we will just run a full node. There are different clients that you can run starting from Geth, Open Ethereum, Nethermind, Bisu, Aragon, and so on. Uh, but I think the first one and the most popular one is Go Ethereum. So in this case, we're just going to run Go Ethereum. Um, so you can configure this differently for different operating systems. In this case, I'm using Windows. So basically everything you need to do for Windows is just click on this, download it and um, just start it up. So after this is done, um, I have prepared a, a little file here, which is going to contain everything that we are going to need for this exercise. And I'm also going to create a GitHub repository of this. So you will be able to download this for yourself. Um, so first of all, I have downloaded Geth here for Windows. So basically everything you need to do is run it. I have prepared three PowerShells, three different PowerShells. Um, the first one is going to run Geth. I'm going to configure the mode to be full and I'm going to give our HTTP address a 000. So I'm going to bind it to 000. Um, let's start this up. As you can see, um, Geth is starting up and we are starting to run um, Ethereum on our computer. So locally, uh, we transform this PC into a node. Um, if you want to run this in the background, you can just type in minus T, uh, which is going to start it in a daemon mode. Um, so you can just leave your PC on and it is going to run uh, the node for you. The next important part is actually to have some test data. I have installed MetaMask already, but the process of installing MetaMask is pretty straightforward. So when you open it, uh, you have an account and basically we can use that account. We can add this account to our local node and query it. But I don't have any transactions on this account, so that would be quite boring. Um, instead, a good alternative to do is um, to run a test data set. So a test data set is basically included in Ethereum JS test um, RPC. So basically what this is going to provide to us is basically some test data with uh, different wallets, accounts and transactions on them. I'm actually not sure if transactions are provided on it, uh, but let's check out. Um, so uh, as you can see, those are the available accounts that are attached to our node. But as I've already mentioned, you could use MetaMask and attach a node to our running instance. Um, so far, so good. Uh, what we can do is just copy one of those here and use it later on. 
Uh, now I have prepared a very simple script here using Web3, uh, which is a library that is going to provide us all the necessary functionality to access um, our blockchain. So basically Web3 is a collection of libraries that allows you to interact with a local or remote Ethereum node using HTTP, IPC or WebSockets. That's quite important to distinguish. You can use different protocols and in this case we are using HTTP since we have provided HTTP here but you could also provide WS for using WebSockets and so on. So basically what this library is going to do, it is going to provide you with all the necessary functionalities um, to query the blockchain. So you will be able to see, you will be able to get um, things like accounts, get block numbers, get balance, get storage and so on and so forth. We can actually open Web3 to see what is behind it. So as you can see, um, this is quite a lot of convenient structures here that is going to make our life easier. For example, as I have already mentioned, uh, in order to uh, query transactions, in order to get accounts, in order to um, produce the statistical data that we see in Etherscan, this is just going to be a convenience library for us uh, to make life easier. But you can also achieve the same with curl. So I have opened Postman here and there is actually quite a nice um, crypto processing platform collection uh, where we have a lot of operations that you can use. So if you don't want to use the library, um, you can manually call those endpoints. Uh, so for example, we have an API for transactions, we have um, Bitcoin transactions um, and so on and so forth. Um, so basically just a library um, to make life easier so we don't have to use curl. Since um, we have configured everything now, uh, we have started our instance here. Our instance is processing, I mean node, not instance. And we have started our, um, uh, our test node as well. So per default, it is going to listen on port 8545. So what we can do now is actually run this. So let me type uh, the name of our file just going to be um, if.js and we're going to run this and hopefully at some point we should see some output and great um, there is some output so this means we are actually connected and this is working great so a next step would be to actually query transactions for an account let's quickly type out a method like that Great, it seems that we have been able to compile. The only bad news is that we actually don't have any transactions on this account. Um, so there is actually not much output. But basically this is just um, a relatively uh, straightforward block that is going to uh, go through each and every block, um, look at our address, look if something has been transferred from our address to any other address and it is going to sum it up. If you want to create something cooler with this, or if you want to maybe connect it with your account and check your transactions, uh, you can easily do that. Just don't run um, this test environment here. Uh, just connect your MetaMask account um, to our block in our node that is running here and go ahead. Or you can also just uh, get some random addresses from the internet and see what transactions they have done since the blockchain is a publicly available network. I hope you had a lot of fun in this video and you learned a lot of new stuff. So basically, if you're interested in the inner workings of projects like Etherscan, um, how the blockchain is scanned, um, how you can interact with it, how you can test your own contracts, um, let me know down in the comments. I really like this topic and if you're interested, I will create more videos on it. 
So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.